Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new, I'm Stacy and today this light is reflecting a lot right here. <laughs> but it does light up the lower half of the table quite nicely. I just we're having a hard time today. <laughs> Alright, as long as it's not shining directly on the reference photo, we should be fine. Um today we are going to be working on velour paper again. This is a nice like camel colored brownish piece. We like it, right? It's very soft and velour-y feeling. Here's our reference photo from our color cube cards. And these are our, this is our basic palette. And if you flip the card over, these are all the colors that you could use. Now these are a jumping off point for me. And I always tend to mix in an additional color just cause just cause I can my glasses are hurting my nose today I mean, what is happening I'm past due for new glasses what's happening okay moving right along we're gonna zoom in I've already picked my colors um that's a little too zoomed in right because you can't see the whole card there we go now we're all zoomed in and let's, let's have our camera focus on something here. But there we go. I got as close as I could. Now this is a deep green, this one right here. It's a deep slate gray, but it's very green leaning. So I grabbed out this slate gray. It's a little purpley, but I figured we could mix it with the other colors. And I'm mostly seeing it over here on top in the darks, so maybe we'll lay down, lay it down over there at the end. There is a little moon right here, which I'd like to put in. Um, maybe a little bit larger, make it more prominent. I just dug into the paper. Don't do that. Don't do what I did. This paper does mark very easily, so don't set things on top of it. If you have a piece just laying around. I did set, I don't know if it'll show up, something on top of one of my finished pieces without realizing it. We're setting off to the side. These are all of our finished pieces that we've done. There's so many. Um, but this one, this guy, and you can see right here, I set something round on the surface of the paper and I don't know it won't smooth out it's like dug into the paper a little bit so we're warning and I've kept the little pad it's empty now but I'm keeping it as a folder for all the pieces and each piece gets covered in a piece of tissue paper which I just fold off on it's a little big for each piece I just fold the corner and we gently stack them on top of each other. Close this up and set it someplace where it's not going to, nothing else is going to be set on top. So that's what I've been doing with all of these pieces as they get completed. All right, so moving right along, let's start with this green. This is that turquoisey kind of green that we keep using. Um, kind of dig it. Let me just pop that in. And we're gently going to mist it. Like we're going to pop it in dark where it's obviously dark. Right? But then, where all these clouds are, we're going to just we're gonna lighten our hand a little bit. Go ahead. Lighten that hand down here. Just, just pale. A little skimming. Just a little skin. We don't want to fill up the trees of the paper too much. But we do want this color to, to bleed through a little bit, right? To sparkle through. Like that. And there's our start. Just put that puppy down. I'm going to come in with this darker green, which I'm not a fan of. I'm just going to go through there. Go through there. Down here in the bottom, I'm kind of just 
trying to use the flat part of this little broken off piece and just kind of slightly skim it across that green that's already down like that and just set over there and then we'll take our gray because it is kind of a little bit gray down here and gently just skim that again these are my Mongeo handmade soft soft pastels these are very soft they do get a little i don't know if, if you're new here you, you haven't seen um, they do get very crumbly and they break pretty easily i just stick the small chunks in here and i use them as i go if they're big enough to grasp but these pieces that aren't big enough to grasp you can put them um, use a blending tool or something to use that pigment if you if you don't want to waste it if you're worried about that okay so these go down really easily and you just barely have to touch the surface of the paper to get that beautiful scrape of pigment going down and we're going to do the whole bottom because it is very very kind of gray down here right you don't want to cover all that brown camel color. We'll let that bleed through a little bit here and there. Okay. Just a touch of it up there. And then all across this bright blue. It's not digging how bright and vibrant that is. It's throwing me off. I do like how so oh, this is a little bit softer. I'm going to take my white gently softly barely barely skimming the surface of the paper and just give it a little a little haze like that and we're going to use the, the white as a base for our clouds over the top we'll do that in a minute here i want to get this haze in first a little bit of haze happening over the top of these colors to kind of blend them together and the way that looks blended is to take your finger or a blending tool if you wish and on this paper gently kind of go back and forth and let it settle into the fibers of the paper the paper has a little bit of a fuzzy feel to it and you can feel it the, the little hairs or little fuzzies moving around under your finger. Reminds me of a soft caterpillar. Or what else feels fuzzy like this? Ooh, the, uh, a horse's nose feels soft like this when they warm. <laughs> a horse's nose and ears are very velvety. It's, if you can get, uh, if you get a chance, I recommend. I recommend experiencing that. Okay. A little dark right there. I don't like that. So it's rather green. I think I pulled some of the gray from over there. In here. Not digging that. This looks square, which is still me on. It's a little better. Alright. Yeah, that kind of softens that brightness a bit. I dig it. Go ahead and get all these colors kind of settled into the page, just gently once again. See how they fuzz, they fuzz out? That's because the, the pigment's not really blending. Some of it's lifting off on my finger, but not much. Not much at all. Focus. There we go. Very little. Um, mostly it's just falling deeper into those fibers, which is awesome. I love this paper so much. It is definitely a love at this point. And we are going to move on to um, more. See, it's just mostly stained on my finger now. Not there's no real, not a lot of residue, which is great. All right, moving on. Let's take our white. And we're going to go ahead and block in. This is the soft one now. You can use a harder one. This is my hardest one. This one I usually reserve for getting in um, very bright white areas where you really want it to stand out. But you can use a harder pastel if you want to. Or even the mid 
this is my this is my Prismacolor new pastel these are very hard um, and this is my Soho pastel it's kind of a medium hard but you do have to use a little pressure to get that vibrant white like that or you can use the soft pastel super soft and this set was not expensive at all and if you just want one soft soft pastel go for your tints because you're going to put those on top anyways um generally speaking on regular paper but see i'm barely skimming the surface of that page and look how much pigment is laying down I'm just kind of push it along push it along like that well, it goes down quite nice and hardly any pressure. Okay, so let's quit playing around and get our actual shapes in, right? We're playing around, man. Go ahead and get in those shapes. And it doesn't have to be exactly matching here. The reference photo is a guide. It does not need to be exact. I want to get it nice and crisp over here. Okay, and then down on the bottom, just a tint like that. And let some of that dark bleed through. And then this guy is coming right over here. Right. And you can put green in and pull back if you get too carried away. Don't, don't stress it if you get too much weight in. Right, I'm going to start with that. Ooh, and then let's, let's put in our peach. Now, to me, <laughs> these colors are very pink. Peach pink, that sherbet color. These are very in between pink and pink and orange. These are very orange to me. So we're going to mix them together as I've done in other other ones. Now this doesn't want to make these scrap paper. Oh. It doesn't want to get moving on the page or it doesn't want to go. So if you have a new pastel and it feels super smooth and it won't put down pigment, just grab a piece of scrap paper and scrub it around just to get it, get it going. It kind of takes that weird coating off the pastel and gets it moving for you. So it'll set down those colors more easily. Like that. I think I want the cream and the soft pastel instead of oh yeah, there we go. Let's see there. I'm just gonna go down. I don't, oh I do, I have this peachy, that's very close, <gasps> let's put these guys away, I'm very excited, let's do that, okay, now I'm just kind of, the gist of the shapes, the gist, just the gist, tap, tap, tapping, and then this pink part right here, Go ahead and put down your yellow. And then take your peachy color. Is that going to be vibrant enough? Not quite. I'm going to take my pink that I keep using. And it is pretty... soft. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes down. Just kind of light to mid, going into that mid pressure. Um, 
skimming, shimmying to get those shapes in. Yeah, like that. And then over here, I'm going to go ahead and soften this out a little bit. See how it kind of it doesn't really cover it, but it does soften those tints below and make it look more cloud like. Gives those little bumps, which are desirable. Like that. that texture. So you kind of, if you put your hand there, perfect. It's perfect for me. And I'm gonna put in some little, that little wispy bit, gently just skimming along the page. Tap, tap. Let's this like that. Boop. And then there's wisps over here. And coming down into that white cloud over here. That's kind of white, gray, green. Lots of the green is filtering through. So I'm digging that, leave it there. Don't cover it all up. Don't do it. And see how I lost some of my green area? Do we want to make it bigger? Do we not? So if you do, you can go in and just gently wiggle it into the cloud. Like that, and we'll push it back a little bit and make it more of this shape. If you want, you don't have to, not even a little bit. If you like how your cloud looks, leave it alone. We lost some of those edges. Softly, gently pop them back in. And I did lose a bunch of the green area down here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back in because I did want to put that moon in. So I'm going to go ahead and wiggle this back in here. Like that. Okay. Sweep it off the page. Sweep those excesses off. Then go gray. Soften that back out. Yeah, that's a little better. Then we have more of a Rolling cloud can roll like that. It's pretty vibrant right there. And then it kind of gray pinks out down here. There's all kinds of stuff going on down here. Oops. Now, I want this to read a little more vibrant. So, I'm going to take that, maybe that light peach. Light peach, is that the color? Mm hmm, don't care for it. A little pale pink. Okay, 
pink and come in here and just dab in some highlights on our pink, pink area to make it look more floofy. But I'm going to have a really dig in right there. Okay, I think, I think that's pretty nice. All right, let's see what this color does here, gently. Over the top. Just super, super soft. Super, super soft. Instead of going with this dark gray, Barely touch it with paper. Just to give it that hint of shadow. Are you liking that or does it just look dirty? We started, we might as well finish. Maybe. Whispies. Come on, my thoughts. Furniture settling on the patio. We've had some very nice, coolish days these last few days. I say coolish because um, it's been a uh, hit and miss. It's not going to be the way I want it to be. I want it kind of peek me out from that cloud right there. Let's see if we can get a 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, does that work? I like it does. Okay, let's go. Hmm. Well, these are too, too bright. Just a touch too vibrant. Then we'll take that gray. Got that in. For the dark darks, right? Just for those dark dark areas. And it gives it even more depth, which is amazing. Just amazing, you guys. Super barely touching the page. Barely, barely touching the page to get some of those other shadow shapes in. So just kind of dusky feeling, right? I feel like it's very dusky feeling. A heavier hand here and there. Okay. I think this is too pink now. Throw me off! I don't know that there's really much to do about it. Just a little skim of the, the peach to give it that more sherberty feel. Is that right? Kind of. I don't know. I feel like it needs something. A little something. I'm not really digging this one as much as I have the other ones. Perhaps I need a break from from clouds, maybe? I only have two more to do. This shape, this shape in here is bugging me. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull that in right there.
Um, and, um, That's a little better. I lost some of my poofy white parts, the little glows. That's what happened. Stop looking like clouds, I don't just look like a hot mess. It's a hot mess. All right, yeah, I think I'm overworked this one a bit. Just a bit. Should I leave it alone? I feel like if I do anything else, it's just going to make it worse, so... Maybe, perhaps, we'll just leave it alone. I don't like those dark clouds floating around on it. That's my problem. I am not digging that at all. I could have left them out and I didn't. Lesson learned. See? Things you learn as you go, right? You got, you're not going to love them all. There's not enough tooth left on the paper to put down any more pigment. See that? See, it's not really picking up that hot pink. That is a hot pink. It's like, nah, I don't want to. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to stop there. That doesn't look like a moon now. It looks like just a blob of white in the sky. Yeah. That's a little better. Alright, I'm gonna stop. Let's take off our tape. That always makes me feel better. Just remove the tape and call it finished. It's fine. <laughs> That weird stormy sky. I went into, I shouldn't have put the green on the bottom underneath. I should have gone in with my white first and then put the green in the spots I needed it on top. Because I think it muddied things up just a bit more than I wanted it to. But there it is. There's all of our colors. It's the joy of these cards. They have that film over them. So if you do get them dirty, you can just wipe them off. And you can run them on, I've run them underwater too. Because <laughs> they got splatters of watercolor paint on them. And it was just a more efficient way to, I mean, don't like soak it in water or anything. But you know, you know what I mean. Here's our reference. There's our painting. Meh. I feel meh about this one. <laughs> oh, but there it is. Gonna put it out there anyways. You can't, 
You can't only, well, you can. You can only put out your best work. I, t I tend not to, though. I tend to put the mediocres out there as well. The really bad ones, I, d I don't. If I, if I get halfway through, I'm like, oh man, this is horrible. <laughs> Start over. Um, you don't see those. But this one, this one's all right to put out there. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what you would have done differently if you're a pastelist and you've worked on this paper before. I would love some tips and tricks. Um, I am loving the paper. Um, yeah, that's all I got. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for being here. Bye.